Welcome back to Fast Market on the TD Ameritrade Network. I'm Tom White, joined by my co-host Kevin Hinks. But let's bring in our next guest for our cash tag segment, and that's going to be Landon Swan, the co-founder of Likefolio. Welcome back to the show, Landon. Thanks, Tom. Hey, Kevin. All right. So we're talking beverages. Uh, you know, Pepsi seemed to do okay on their earnings uh, last week, um, you know, probably driven by their snack food segment. But, uh, you know, Coke's held up pretty well. It's only down a couple percent so far this year. Uh, but yeah, I look at currency headwinds. Uh, I look a lot at a lot of issues uh, for this inflationary pressures, weakening economies overseas. They've got this massive, giant global footprint. But what kind of data are you guys seeing on Likefolio? You know, you're right. Pepsi did really well on their earnings report. At least the, the reaction from the street was really good. I mean, they were up about, I think, four and a half percent the next day. Um, side note, Coke was up about two percent that same day. So obviously, the you know investors are looking at Pepsi as a as a bit of a bellwether for Coke, even though their businesses are pretty different. Half of the Pepsi, Pepsi business is the same as Coke, uh, and since then, uh, Pepsi's up about eight percent, while Coke is up about five and a half percent. So uh, Coke's kind of following suit right now, but now it's their time to actually lay down their numbers and see if they are uh, meeting those expectations that Pepsi laid forward. So uh, when we look at their overall, you know, the overall lands. You kind of see um, when you compare Coke versus Pepsi, even throw in some other companies, you can see that uh, Coke actually has a little bit stronger purchase intent uh, growth on a year over year basis, a little bit less on the happiness side. They're lagging behind slightly about three points. Um, we threw in a couple of others in there, Celsius and Monster. You can kind of see their outliers there. Uh, but comparing Coke and Pepsi. Again, Coke doing a little bit better on the on the X axis, which is purchase intent growth year over year, and a little bit worse on happiness, which is the Y axis. Uh, so pretty similar to where Pepsi's sitting right now, even though they are obviously in different companies. But when we look at the actual brands of Coke and see, you know, which which one of these brands is driving the the growth or the uh, falling back, it's kind of interesting. I mean, we're not, um, you know, we're kind of looking at some of the, I guess, the tails here. And you can see that their their milk brand, Fairlife, is doing really well, and their Simply Juices brands, Apple Lemonade, are also doing really well. Their their waters are not doing as well. They those had a big surge, and they're kind of falling off, kind of reverting back to the mean. You can see at the bottom of the chart there, uh, all three of them: Topo Chico, Aha, and Dasani. Uh, so you can kind of get a feeling of of where the potential growth for Coke lies. Um, we're seeing pretty average growth when it comes to their core brands uh, like Coke and Sprite and things like that. But just want to give you a picture of some of the, the outlier brands that a lot of people don't think of that you may begin to see uh, coming up on earnings reports, especially those top few there. Uh, overall, though, Coke is looking you know, it's kind of like a nice defensive stock, right? It's, it's, hang, it's hung in there. It's only 10 points off of its all-time highs. Um, it's Again, it's just a defensive stock. It's a great place to put your money if you're scared of what the market might do. Uh, and it does have some nice tailwinds working for it right now. People talking about going out to restaurants up 24% year over year. Fast foods up 8% year over year. Uh, so while they are a little bit different than Pepsi, they don't have the snacks, they're all beverages, they're still that same defensive type stock play. And they're really just kind of chugging along. Uh, nothing crazy to report on the upside or downside. Uh, they're just looking pretty solid. Man, and I got a lot of questions about today's show, the, the least of which is what is Tom shipping to Australia? We're gonna, we're, we'll, we'll worry about that later. I'm, that's very concerning. But about Coke in general, are you telling me that Fairlife, their biggest brand here is milk? Milk? Biggest growth. Biggest growth. Sorry. That milk. is the biggest change year over year. Yeah, that like is the, the one that's kind of kicking up there. Milk. <laughs> well, plus 160% year over year unmentioned volume, right? Oh, so how the this is not saying flowing. that more people are drinking their Fairlife milk brand than they're drinking Coke or Sprite. No, that's not what that's saying. That's saying that's the growth change year over year. That's we wanted to kind of give you an idea of where some of these uh, these smaller brands are laying, so you can kind of see who might be coming up on the earnings report. Obviously, you're going to be talking about the core products that Coke produces. These are these are a little bit more on the edges, but just giving people an idea, like they do have juices, they do have milk, and so, um, and the waters are not doing as well. That's kind of what the purpose of this is. But no, it's, it's milk is not more popular than, than Coke or Sprite right now. <laughs> Landon, Land, and, one, and one last thing, is their energy drink, is that what differentiates them from, from, from Pepsi, is the energy drinks that they're they seem pretty much all in in terms of energy drinks besides 
what, what, what am I going to do? Order a rum in Fairlife? What's that all about? <laughs> I don't think that would be very good. No. I, I mean, I don't know. You can try it, but you, you can report back to me. Uh, maybe a rum and simply lemonade. That might not be bad. Uh, but yeah, I think that, uh, you know, they, they are getting into the energy drink game. And that's why we threw up some of the competitors there, Monster Celsius. Uh, you can kind of get an idea of where they're standing, beating up on Monster, but uh, falling behind on the much smaller Celsius uh, brand. Uh, but overall, again, this is you know, I hate to I hate to be a little bit boring with this company, but it is kind of a boring company. I mean, it's not a growth stock. It's just one that continues to produce uh, nice revenue numbers in an up or down economy. They're selling sugar, basically, which is very cheap. It's a, just a marketing game. That's all this is. It's just a marketing game. Uh, and they've done a very good job at it. They are an iconic brand that has lasted, you know, decades and they're not going anywhere. So a uh, very strong company just chugging along and what a great place to park your money if you're afraid of what might come. Yeah, and uh, that stock did hit all time highs earlier uh, this year. But Landon, you know, I, I was happy to see Fresca on there. It Fresca. brings me back to my <laughs> Caddyshack days. How about a Fresca? But at the same time, if you look at this company, you know, Warren Buffett's heavily involved in here. Uh, they pay a solid dividend uh, if, if that's announced and goes through. Uh, as usual. But um, when you look at this company, based on uh, an earning score going into these results, is it going to be another Pepsi? Or what are you guys seeing? You know, we were pretty, pretty neutral on Pepsi. We're pretty neutral on Coke. There's just nothing in the data that says that you know, there's a huge surprise coming either way. So I think that if you are invested in this company, you can probably you know, relax a little bit. You don't have to worry about anything that's coming up. I would say that it's interesting that, you know, they reacted so well to Pepsi's earnings and then obviously they should. I think that the potential downside is they don't live up to those expectations, but everything that we've got from a data perspective is that they're going to basically come in line and, and not really surprised to the upside, not really surprised to the downside. Uh, so, you know, as a, as an investor, I would be comforted by that. I'd say, all right, I'm good to just hold. As a trader, I might think about, you know, maybe selling some premium, but I'll leave that to you guys. All right, great stuff. As always, stock up two and a quarter percent. Maybe uh, the numbers already built in here mm -hmm. on this move today. Very possible. Helping the uh, Dow Industrials uh, uh, lead to the uh, upside, the overall market. All right, great stuff as always, Landon. Appreciate it. Have a good day. Thanks, guys. You too. All right. That's Landon Swan, co-founder of Likefolio, breaking down the Coca-Cola, Kevin. And this is a 